Music video sets are notorious for being extra. Oftentimes there are multiple people that star in the video and the video crew is usually at least a few people as well. But what do you do when the year is 2020 and the normal process just gets thrown out the window? You do it yourself. Challenge accepted. This video is all about how I made three music videos last year on my own without a video crew, but definitely with the help of my super supportive girlfriend. From ideation to planning and shooting. Fair warning, this is hard. I spent many days doubting my ideas, my ability to execute my ideas, and wondering how I could still make them look professionally shot. I tried to meticulously plan these things ahead of time, and yet I still ran into tons of small errors, like forgetting to turn up the music loud enough for the camera to sync, uh, forgetting to get a frame of the color checker for grading, forgetting to get more behind the scenes footage, and forgetting to take off my Fitbit watch. Hmm. Plenty of other artists in 2020 decided to do the DIY route as well with phone music videos and laptop music videos, uh, just something similar bare bones because we're just working with what we got. So being that I've been a professional behind a camera for eight years, I felt compelled to do as much as I could personally take on. So let's start with ideation. I try to keep it minimal in terms of concepts, uh, less on production challenges and more heavily on like style and vibe. This comes from watching other music videos as inspiration or maybe just simplifying a certain idea that the video could showcase and leaning into that feeling as much as possible. Some samples of videos that are simple in concept would be Something Has to Change by The Japanese House or Bellyache by Billie Eilish. I chose environments that were a lot more in my disposal or that wouldn't cause any interference to the creation process. So Alone was centered on the idea of being confined in a relationship. So our apartment during quarantine was a perfect fit. You and Me was more the inside look on the story of a relationship, so filming in our most recent empty apartment felt natural, as well as using our bedroom for the candle scenes, spliced with just old home footage. Videos with home footage is always a good vibe too. And finally, Sick of the Lies was more about a performance, and to be honest, I thought the white psych wall looked really cool. Plus I wanted to feel like a stylized interrogation, so the infinity wall really helped sell that look. So I try to narrow the scope of the shoot to what can be accomplished with as little assistance as possible. In each case for assistance, I had Andrea help carry the camera since we were already in quarantine together. I did have one friend help carry a small LED light from like 15 feet away for one of the street shots of the alone video, just in case the street lights didn't light the scene enough. Let's talk about capturing. So to simplify the actual shooting, I chose equipment that would make things easier to capture and just keep moving in general. I normally would use my Ronin S rig to film when I'm controlling the camera, but with my cage and everything attached, this thing gets really heavy, especially when you're carrying it in more difficult positions where the weight is maybe like away from your body. So I didn't want this to be a limiting factor in how quickly we could film since Andrea doesn't have a ton of experience shooting things for me. So I assembled a lightweight and more minimal rig for handheld shots which would be the camera, a lens, and a cage for gripping the camera in different positions. My next piece of equipment was a tripod. This was something I was a little bit skeptical about because it can be quite difficult to utilize a shot that's in a fixed position for too long. Having a camera in one position that doesn't move requires you to either be creative in the performance or with your editing later on. In most cases, I chose to shoot multiple tripod angles so that I could bounce around and give the video a little bit more visual interest. My third main piece of equipment was an electronic slider. These are super handy because they can continuously run by themselves as I film a shot. These are also just super fun to play around with and you can pick multiple directions and patterns for the camera to move, giving you plenty of options for usable clips and post. They are extra handy when you're riding solo. And finally for lighting, I try to use exterior lighting as much as possible to avoid bringing any heavy equipment along with me. And then for indoor shots where I needed a light, I stuck to one light and umbrella because that's usually my go-to anyway. This was mounted on whichever way was most convenient to get each shot. Sometimes it was just off to the side or directly above, fastened to the rig. To keep it also cheap and simple, the light that I used was a Godox SL60, which is only 120 bucks. So for shot planning, music videos usually fall into three categories a performance a narrative or some kind of experimental a lot of videos have a combination of either of those three i try to combine them for more visual interest but in some cases a performance video was pretty much exactly what i wanted i then plan shots based on whatever equipment i had 
So first up, I would get the wide and tight tripod shots to establish a setting and have a stationary shot to be able to chop to in editing. Second, I switched over to the slider for more of pretty much the same thing. Maybe getting a little bit more experimental on the angle of the slider or the direction it, it also pans as well, just to be a little bit fun. And finally, I would do a hybrid of those same tactics with a handheld rig. This is also where the tight shots can be a little bit more experimental with capturing certain details that you might want to showcase to further establish your story. Ultimately, I'm really looking for maybe like five to seven solid takes that I can select from at any given second of the final edit and post, whether that be performance clips or story-based clips. And voila! I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into how I make DIY music videos. Please subscribe! Subscribe.